Seeking out incredible archaeological finds and delivering them to our viewers is what we do on this channel. Fortunately for you and for us, they're never in short supply. Whether it was discovered last week or 100 years ago, there's always something incredible to show you. And we're always happy to serve as your messenger. Here's our latest collection of fantastic archaeological finds, all of which have to be seen to be believed. We're starting with a solid gold story, and we mean that literally. This bowl, decorated with a distinctive solar motif, was found in Austria in April 2021. Discoveries like this are rare in Austria, but the sun motif makes it totally unique. Archaeologists believe it to be approximately 3,000 years old. The discovery was made as construction workers cleared ground prior to the creation of a new railway line in the area. The valuable find prompted a full archaeological dig at the site, revealing the presence of what's thought to be a Bronze Age settlement created by the Urnfield culture, consisting of several pile dwellings arranged around a large central building. It was occupied for about 300 years, beginning 3,300 years ago. Four objects were found inside the bowl, two gold wire bracelets and two scraps of fabric that might have been leather stitched with gold thread. The presence of a further 500 bronze objects around the bowl, including knives, daggers and pins, implies that this might have been a votive offering. There's a water course nearby, so the objects might have been thrown into the water during a ritual of some kind. There's probably no human hobby older than that of fishing. All you need to go out fishing is a line and a hook. That's the way that people have been going about catching fish for at least 1,200 years, and we know that because of the discoveries that have been made at the Jordan River Dereyajat archaeological site in Israel in recent years. A team working at the site has discovered a collection of fishing-related artifacts, including 19 bone fish hooks and grooved pebbles that were probably used as sinkers. Plant fiber residues have been detected on some of the hooks, which are strong indicators of the presence of primitive fishing lines. These hooks come in multiple shapes with an arrangement of barbs, suggesting that each might have been specialized for a particular type of fish. There are even residues in the bends of some of the hooks that might mean artificial lures were used. Taken together, these discoveries indicate that the people who lived here all that time ago had intricate knowledge of ecology and fish behavior and were capable of developing complex fishing technology to suit those behaviors. The earliest works of art our ancient ancestors created were carved or painted onto the rocks, stones, and bones around them. The earliest things they painted were simple lines or geometric shapes, but they eventually moved on to painting the world around them. In July 2020, archaeologists confirmed the discovery of the oldest known drawings of animals in Siberia. Their depictions of camels fighting each other etched onto a mammoth tusk, and they're thought to be a staggering 13,000 years old. The tusk is five feet long and was found in the Lower Tom River in western Siberia. It shows four camels and what might be a human in a camel suit. If the experts are right about the fifth drawing being of a human in a camel suit, it might be a representation of how ancient people disguised themselves as camels so they could get closer to the animals while hunting them. The fighting camels would probably have been drawn at the start of the annual mating season, the beginning of mating season might have played a crucial role in the lives of these nomadic hunters, as it would also likely have marked the beginning of hunting season and been a basic way of marking or understanding the passage of time. The Archaeological Survey of India hailed a great discovery in July 2020 when it found a 9th century monolithic Shiv Ling sandstone in Vietnam's Cham Temple complex. It's likely that the monument would never have been found at all if it were not for a conservation project the team was there to partake in. The discovery is important, not just because it's a beautiful and well-preserved Shiv Ling, but also because it reaffirms that there was significant cultural contact between Vietnam and India in ancient times. The temple complex is a World Heritage Site and was built by order of King Indravarman II when he was the ruler of the Khmer Empire. 
Six other shivlings have also been found at the site, although none of the others is as impressive as this one. The same team has also found black touchstone pillars, red sandstone pillars, and broken idols of ancient gods and goddesses. Taken all together, they feel that this might point to the existence of a previously unknown temple hidden among all the others at the complex. Excavating the whole site is such a large-scale job that it's still going on now, over a year since this discovery. There's an ancient stone monument in Turkey called Pluto's Gate. It's better known to the locals as the Gateway to Hell, and they're wary of going near it at night even though it's been abandoned for centuries. The site somehow managed to evade discovery until 2013 when it was found by archaeologists following the route of a thermal spring. The surviving buildings closely match descriptions of a temple to the underworld that appear in the writings of Greek philosopher Strabo, who claimed to have seen it during the early first century. These ancient writings say the tourists came to the site and bought birds then expose them to the toxic air that emits from the dark cavern. The birds would die. It was said that only high priests could expose themselves to the fumes and survive, and even they sometimes lost their minds. Quite why the air would be so deadly is unknown, but archaeologists have determined that the cavern was once connected to the temple with a pool. We can only assume that someone must have been putting something in the water for unknown reasons, there are stories that birds still sometimes die when they fly too close to Pluto's gate today, but they're probably not true. The site of Ekatorp in Olan, Sweden, has been of enormous importance at two different points in Swedish history. It was created as a hill fort during the Iron Age and was then almost completely knocked down, rebuilt, and significantly enlarged during the Middle Ages. It was a purely defensive ring fort when it was first built, but over time it became a protected medieval town and then eventually a cavalry garrison. These days it's a tourism hotspot and a popular choice of backdrop for people who like to reenact medieval battles. Many archaeological digs have been carried out here over the years, resulting in the discovery of more than 24,000 ancient artifacts. The site is sometimes referred to as Ekatorp Castle although that's not technically accurate. The original walls and buildings were created at the start of the 5th century, but Ekatorp was mysteriously abandoned during the 7th century until redevelopment work began in the 11th century. It's thought that a round shape was chosen for the walls because the fort was built on a flat, level plain, making attack equally likely from any side. You could argue that it makes it a poor choice of location for a fort, but who are we to argue with these ancient builders? The Kalagulamai Jain beds in the Tuthakuti district of Tamil Nadu, India are not actually beds. Instead, they're an incredible collection of rock-cut architecture and art dedicated to Hindu and Jain religious figures. Most archaeologists believe that the carvings are actually unfinished and that the site was eventually supposed to become a rock-cut temple. The most popular theory is that the work was done during the reign of King Parantaka Nendajaya during the 8th century. The site is considered to be the greatest surviving example of Pandian art. Vatuvan Coil, another incredible unfinished 8th century rock cut temple, isn't far from here. We can only guess what might have forced builders to abandon two enormous religious building projects during the same century. Among the 150 figures carved into niches here are Parshvanatha, Gomadashwara, and several other figures connected to Jainism. 98 inscriptions have been found at the site of the beds, most of which record the names of donors who helped fund the construction project. We wonder whether they got their money back when the project was abandoned in a state of semi-completion. Kwapagnan, created by the Inca in South America, isn't so much a historic site as a colossal ancient road network that connects six countries. Nevertheless, UNESCO considers it to be Peruvian and is named it a World Heritage Site. It's hard to imagine how enormous the road network is. They would cover a distance of more than 37,000 miles if laid end to end and once connected the whole Tahuatinsuyo Empire. 
Plenty of roads are in Peru, but you'll also find them in Ecuador, Colombia, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. You could follow the path of the roads on a walk along the edge of Lake Titicaca or allow them to guide you from Lima to the Pachacamac archaeological site. The creation of the roads made trade much easier, but it also put one town in touch with another and allowed for the exchange of knowledge and cultural ideas. When the roads needed to cross rivers, bridges were built. When they needed to cross the mountains, they used rope bridges. Every 12 miles or so, the Inca built lodging, storage, and shelter facilities called tambos. It's thought that the first roads might have been created by the Moches and Chimus, predecessors of the Inca. But the Inca finished the work and get to claim all the glory from modern historians. Speaking of feats of construction that span enormous areas, let's look at the many prehistoric pile dwellings of the Alps. The tradition of building these stilt houses began 7,000 years ago and lasted about 4,500 years. If you visit the Alps, you'll find them almost everywhere you look, but they mostly cluster around wetlands, rivers, and lakes. 111 of them are considered significant enough to be included on the UNESCO World Heritage List. That includes 56 in Switzerland, 19 in Italy, 18 in Germany, 11 in France, 5 in Austria, and 2 in Slovenia. It was once thought that these stilt houses were deliberately built over water, but it's now believed that they were only built close to the water and that the stilts were there to protect the homes from the regular risk of flooding. The lakes and rivers they once stood next to have expanded over time, meaning the stilts are now underwater and explaining the previous confusion. The people who built the first of these homes would have been among the earliest agrarian societies in Europe. It's remarkable that they built their homes so well that they're still with us today. It's often said that human life as we know it began in Africa. So Africa sounds like a good place to go looking for ancient rock art. You'll find some of the best of it at the site of the Niero rock paintings in Kumi, Uganda. There are six rock shelters at the site, all of which are covered in abstract art created by Ugandan tribes who lived in the region at least 12,000 years ago. Some of the designs have become iconic, including a solar design that appears on the Ugandan 1,000 shilling banknote. Most of the paintings would have been picked out in vivid shades of red and black when they were new, but the colors have faded over time. It's unlikely that anybody will ever be able to say with certainty who created the paintings, but the most likely candidates are the Karamajong tribe. They were among the first people to herd and farm animals in the region, but as they were at least semi-nomadic, there are questions about whether they'd have stayed here for long enough to create the paintings. Any tourists who want to come and look at the paintings face quite a long hike to get to them, but it's worth the trip. Sometimes the name of a place is so literal that it tells you almost everything you need to know about it without even seeing or hearing anything else. Riding on Stone Provincial Park in Alberta, Canada is the perfect example of that. It's a provincial park, and it's known for its collection of ancient riding on stone. Riding isn't an entirely accurate term. The carvings you'll find at the site aren't written language but petroglyphs. The area is a nature preserve and is considered sacred to the Blackfoot and many of Canada's other Aboriginal tribes. Here you'll find the greatest concentration of rock art anywhere on the North American Great Plains. Several thousand individual carvings have been identified, split across 50 different petroglyph sites. The earliest of the petroglyphs were created about 9,000 years ago and might have been the work of the Blackfoot although some other tribes debate that. The Shoshone definitely traveled through the valley regularly and might have made significant contributions of their own. Many of the artworks tell the stories of people who traveled through the valley, in many cases encountering mighty spirits on the way. The presence of a medicine wheel and teepee rings might mean that there was even a permanent settlement here at some stage in the distant past. 
As impressive as those Canadian rock carvings are, the honor of being the most impressive collection of stone art in the world must surely go to the Dazu rock carvings of Chongqing, China. There are thousands of cave temple carvings here with figures and iconography taken from Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. Sculptors first came here to create works of art during the 7th century and carried on doing so until the 13th century. In doing so, they created an effective catalog of China's religious history written in stone. The figures of gods are interspersed with depictions of normal people going about their everyday lives with activities including childcare and farming. More than 60,000 individual pieces have been counted, which is why the area is nicknamed the Country of Rock Carving. After being abandoned sometime after the 13th century, the existence of the site became a state secret, remaining that way until Chinese nationals were allowed to visit it in the 1960s. The authorities opened up the site further in the 1980s, and now anybody is allowed to visit. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.